Thursday night, the Minecraft community entered complete mayhem, but nobody exactly knew why. A mysterious exploit was supposed to somehow let hackers steal accounts, find your location, crash servers, and much more. The scariest exploit we've likely ever seen in Minecraft, and yet, all you needed was a single message in chat. And as the dust from the discovery settles, the panic of the community continues to rise. So in today's episode of Minecraft Uncovered, we explore the chat message that killed Minecraft and how to protect yourself from the craziest exploit in the game's history. I remember it like it was yesterday. Because it was. Yesterday, at 5.10pm my time to be exact, fellow YouTuber Duper Trooper broke the news to myself and some friends that there was something insane going on. Something unbelievable. Literally, I didn't believe it. I thought there was some new session exploit or something and he was just panicking since I'm pretty used to seeing the chaos that follows things like this. But no, this was something much more sinister than that. No simple session exploit, no haha I steal your skyblock coins because bad Minecraft security, no, this was big. Literal seconds later, my entire Discord client blew up with server after server and friend after friend warning me of a mysterious exploit that could cause you to lose everything. At first, it was just something that worked on servers running PaperMC. Then it was breaking fabric, after that it was all of Minecraft since 1.8, and now it's grown past that, like a virus that spread into Steam, iCloud, even the NSA is at risk. But what is this boogeyman that has millions of people fearing for their online safety? Well, it all boils down to something called Log4j. Basically a logger for Java applications that saves things like debug info, chat messages, and more. See, Log4j has something called a zero day, a terrible exploit that the developers, Apache, know about but haven't fixed yet. In fact, there have been GitHub issues and bug reports since November that have so far fallen on deaf ears. Essentially, the Log4j logger forgot to restrict access to something called JNDI, which organizes and names different parts of code. When a hacker sends a special chat message meant to exploit the issue, the logger reads the chat message, saves it on your computer in your logs, and it's executed like a piece of code. In this case, the code tells Java to open a Java class file from whatever website your attacker included in their message, which allows a hacker to do pretty much whatever they want within the bounds of a class file, and that includes a lot of bad things. As you could imagine, when people started to fully understand what was going on, it was a lot less confusing, but even scarier. That meant that if someone wanted a good shot at stealing data from you or even getting into your computer, all they had to do was join your Minecraft server and send a special message in chat that links back to their website. And because glitches like this are somewhat common, though they aren't usually this widespread, there are already tons of tools that any random person could download, quickly upload to their website, and use on pretty much any server they wanted. For a while, no one was safe. So, how exactly did this affect the players? Well, it's not as bad as you might think, though it's not exactly good either. See, in later versions of Java, this was partially patched so that no one could run code on your computer just from a single message, which is just about the bare minimum they could do. But, as I said, that was only in later versions of Java, everything after Java 8. If you were like me a few years back, still desperately clutching onto your 2007 Dell Inspiron running Windows Vista that literally couldn't even install Java 8, you would be at serious risk of a random player getting access to your PC through Minecraft chat of all things. Not visiting some weird scam website, not entering a $5 million Club Penguin gift card giveaway, not pirating Family Guy Season 7 Episode 337, Minecraft chat. And even after the Java update, it was still only partially patched. They couldn't run code on your PC, but they could still use the exploit to find your IP address and location by making your computer send a request to whatever website they wanted you at. As I said before, no one was safe. 
but let's take a moment to veer away from how the exploit affected players and instead look at the servers. Remember back in June when we had a mysterious man DDoSing tons of huge Minecraft servers just for the fun of it? Well, today it seems like we have a bit of a repeat. Even as servers desperately tried to understand what was going on and roll out patches to save themselves, many couldn't keep the server afloat while they did it. Again, newer versions of Java were able to prevent hackers from running code on your computer just from a chat message, but they couldn't prevent the message from going through entirely. Only a single chat message was needed to find the private IP of the server, spam it with requests, and basically DDoS it until the server went down. And this time, anyone could use the exploit to take down nearly any server they wanted, so that's exactly what happened. One by one, servers in the 1.8 PvP community began to drop. First Mine Men Club, then Lunar, Viper MC, Invaded Lands, Cave PvP, Sage PvP, and many more. And after that, it began to spread out even further, even managing to take out Mineplex and Mine Hut, some of the largest servers of all time by player count. In fact, tons of people tried to use it to take down Hypixel and other huge servers like it, but fortunately for us, many managed to patch it early before the panic began or never used anything exploitable in the first place. For those that didn't, it was not going to be fun. Throughout this video, you've probably had one thing on your mind. How do you stay safe? Well, the answer to that question is very different depending on what you use and what servers you play. In terms of the server side of things, I imagine most will implement a fix in the coming days if they haven't already. PaperMC has released a new update since the discovery of this exploit, and any servers that are actively keeping up with new versions should be fine. For server owners that can't or for some reason won't update, blocking messages that contain the code should also probably be fine, as long as you use something to block it before it reaches log4j. No, it's the players we really need to be worried about since this is quite a complicated situation for them. The good news is that anyone that's completely up to date is safe. The bad news is that not everybody is up to date, so the number one easiest way to prevent this is just update everything you can. Update your client, update your mods, update the Minecraft launcher, update Java, update your operating system if you have to. Unless it's trying to make you move to Windows 11, also known as the oops we stole iPhones design update, and then and you can stay behind like I did. But for those that can't or won't update, let's go down the list and see what can be done, starting with Java. Now, Java 8 is what you'll need if you want to prevent any sort of code being run on your computer, and that shouldn't be too crazy of an ask. In fact, most of you probably already have it since any version of Minecraft from 1.12 onwards requires Java 8. It supports all the way back to Vista and even older versions like XP at your own risk, so if you have a computer made any time in the last 15 years, you're probably fine to use Java 8. If your computer is older than that, it's time to upgrade, man. When your hardware predates the gummy bar song, you might be the problem here. You can really easily download new versions of Java from the Java website. Just Google Java 8 download and you'll be able to find plenty of installers and tutorials and so on. As for your clients, the solution is pretty much all the same. On Vanilla, Forge, Fabric, and so on, you just have to add this line to your JVM arguments. I'll post this in the description so it's easy to copy, and as long as you paste it into your arguments which should be under your Minecraft installations tab, you'll be safe from the exploit. If you use Lunar Client, where JVM arguments aren't available in the launcher, there's a helpful guide on the Hypixel forum that you can use at your own risk to try to add them. Badline doesn't really have any JVM workaround that I know of though, so updating really is your only solution. Considering that both Lunar and Badline should be automatically updating themselves though, you really shouldn't have to worry. When all that's taken care of, this message is harmless. No matter how many times you spam it to yourself, nothing will happen since the Java arguments shut down the connection between your game and the logger before any bad requests can be made. And just like that, you kill the chat message that kills Minecraft. Hope you all enjoyed the video, I really tried to get this one out quickly so you would all know the extent of the situation and how to keep yourself safe. It really isn't something that the average person has to care about too much since most of you will probably be able to go about your days as normal and automatic updates will take care of everything for you, but this should hopefully have kept you in the know so you don't have to worry. As always, a lot more videos are in the works, so stay tuned, subscribe if you want, like if you want, whatever else it is that YouTubers are supposed to say. Have a good one guys, peace.